Virgin Radio 104.4 across the UAE. Oh man, when it comes to what these guys have done, it's legendary. They'll be studying these boys in about 20 years. I'm serious. What you guys have created is absolutely massive. Please welcome to the studio, the one, the only, it's the Nilk Boys! <laughs> Salima with us, man. Thank you so much. I know you guys Thank are busy. You. Thank you. Thank you so much. How is it? You are uh, you're back in the in the UAE. I know you've been here before. How does it feel to be back here? Uh, feels great, yeah, dude. It's, it's great. awesome. Every time we come here, it's just like this country in Dubai, Abu Dhabi. It's so much fun. It's so different, and it's just I love coming here, especially for UFC fights. It's so good. Nothing huh? like it. Nothing like it. Yeah, what a, what a big card we've got coming up with all the changes happening as well. Yeah, you oh, yeah. see that? Volkanovski just got on a plane yesterday. He landed yesterday. He's ready to fight. That's what's the best about the UFC is like it's and it's so unexpected too. So those last minute things, they always pull it off. Dana White's obviously the GOAT, good friend of ours. So we I love Probably the best cards of the year. I agree. I agree. Um, I love Dana. Dana for me. I've interviewed Dana before. Um, I think he's legendary in what he's created taking over a company and then turning it at what it is. How did you guys meet? How did, because obviously the Nook Boys and, and the UFC now, there's a there's definitely a partnership there. I see you with Dana as well. Obviously there's a lot of business going on, I think between. Yeah, it's pretty cool. We actually, we don't have an, any like official like business partnership at all. It's literally just friends helping friends. Like we just trade favors and like, it's almost like who can one up each other. Like he'll do us a favor and we'll do him a favor. And we're just, we're just supporting each other like what when whatever we do. But yeah, his son was actually a fan okay. of our videos. So he had showed Dana and then Dana like liked them too and he was fascinated with our fan base. And then he said like, you know, I'd love to do something with these guys and then that's when they brought us out to Abu Dhabi for the first time during COVID when they had the bubble on yeah. mm -hmm. Fight Island. Yep. Right. So we came out for that and then um we kinda just hit it off. We became friends. And we're actually like it's crazy to be able to call him like a real friend. You know, because you meet a lot of people in like the the industry, but we're actually like good friends. You know, and That's to be able to call that guy a friend is like, it's unbelievable. He's the best guy. That's pretty cool. No boys are with us. For many of you, you know who they are. For some of you, this is the first time that you're hearing about them. Um, huge following on social media. I mean, huge. Uh, they they are able to to make moves. They are able to change people's. I don't want to say beliefs, but you're you you're able to. What's the word I'm looking for? Like um, change someone's perspective. Perspective on something. on something, which I think you guys have a, a social response. Do you guys you know you have a social responsibility? <laughs> How does that feel? Uh, it's pretty funny if you think about it. But um, if uh, if I were to explain it, like the trolling and stuff, it is pretty crazy how we're able to like troll to a level where somebody will like actually actually believe it. Correct. So, um, I don't know how to like really answer it. Yeah, I guess I guess when we do the podcast, like we have different guests on. So yeah, I guess now with everything going on in the world, sometimes people like pressure you to like speak on this or do this. So it is interesting because we didn't start like have you know we were just guys messing around, having fun, like so partying. Go, yeah, go back to how yeah. the Nook Boys sort of came about. Like, when did it start? Did it start by accident? A lot of these things usually start as an accident. So yeah. how did it start? There's been like different eras to it, but yeah, I mean, originally when it started, it was, I just made the channel in like 2010, like just making a YouTube account, like not thinking anything of it, just like making an account to watch videos and comment and then just making videos for fun, mm -hmm. like pranks, funny stuff, even serious stuff. And then just slowly starting to get views, making a little bit of money, like a thousand a month, 2000 a month, and then be able to eventually make a living off of it, quit your job full time. And then, yeah, I met Salim like a few years later met steve um and we just kind of just kept going with it and yeah there was no like quick blow up moment it was always just steady growing 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 and we built this cult following and they're they're just ride or die like we have i wouldn't trade our fan base for anyone else's fan base even if some people have like more followers like logan paul or mr beast like I never compare our fan base to anyone else's because ours is the best by far. 100%. Yeah, I mean, you, when you guys do anything, they, they, they're they not only loud, but there's so many of them that rock up. They're wild. Right, they're wild, wild right? They're, they're pretty crazy. Do you know, do you, like, do you know why, why is that? Like, what is, what are the Nelk boys doing different to what some of the other people are doing? I think because, for me personally, I think because we've... Our, our our fan base like we really really care about them and we've always shown it throughout the videos like like having them involved like us calling them boys and stuff right like saying yo what up boys like we're gonna do this this that um and we just never turn our back on them like you know what i mean a lot of a lot of uh social media per people 
have um, like these fan bases where um, they would turn their back on them or do something like wrong or whatever. But we've always stuck to just our fan base and we love them so much. I think our whole our whole team too. We constantly like from me to Celine to Steve to like cousin Jay to Gabe, everyone that we have involved, everyone actually really like cares about the content. Like even when we get big now, some people just think, oh, it's all about the money, like blah blah blah. But like. We'll actually get upset if we make like a bad video and don't get good feedback from our fan base, you know? Like it actually hurts us. Cool. Like we love our we love to like think of an idea, go out, shoot it, edit it, like post it and then get good feedback, you know? Like our whole fan base loving it and reading those comments and all that love. That's what really like makes us happy, you know? Is like making good videos for our fans. Some of your pranks that you guys have done are crazy. Yeah. Do, how much work goes into a prank? And is there one that you guys, what's your favorite? Like, is there one that stands out? That is the Burj Khalifa of pranks, the tallest tower in the world of pranks. Is 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 there one? There's different ones. Sometimes, like, me and Salim could, like, think of an idea and go shoot it today. Yeah. And it could go, like, viral, you know? But then some will take, like, a month of planning. So there's different styles of different pranks. But I don't know. Some of my favorites are the we did like this Bigfoot series yeah, where we'll um, we'll find someone that believes in Bigfoot and we'll like post an ad and say we want to we have a TV show and we're trying to find Bigfoot. And then we'll go on these excursions with these Bigfoot experts and we'll put a Amazing. we'll put a fake Bigfoot, a, someone in a costume in the woods and we'll like oh see God. them. So Wait, those ones. There was a Bigfoot quote unquote. That. That, was that you guys? Oh, like, like, Actually, you never know. You never know. Maybe we're working on something. Is this a setup? Maybe, maybe, maybe. So yeah, when when that. when you're amongst a prank like this and you've got this guy so invested into Bigfoot and you've taken him out to the wall, at all do you feel guilty? Like, yeah. are you like, oh man, we, we are well, really? Now, now we're blessed when we like now that we obviously make more money off it. We we usually take care. Like, if it's a big prank like that. Like I think every Bigfoot expert, like the one guy we Gosh, bought him, we yeah. bought him like a Corvette. Oh. What? The other guy we gave him like, and we'll fly them out to LA and like, we, we give them money after because they're they become such a big character in the videos yeah. too. So if it's a big prank like that, we usually like to mess with them and then kind of give them some money after too. That's but cool. is it getting harder for you guys to do these pranks though? Because yeah, obviously, 100%. You're, I mean, yeah. Yeah. what do you do? Everyone knows who you are. Yeah, we're constantly like evolving and. You know, when when we were younger and I was younger, even like we didn't care about anything. You didn't care about getting arrested. Yeah. And it was like now it's plus before if we were to upload a video, it would be rare that someone that you're pranking would see the video. Right. Like if we saw the video of some if someone that we prank saw the video mm -hmm. and they contact contacted us, we'd be like, oh, shit, like that person saw the video. Now it's it's guaranteed like a They're friend, a yeah. friend of a friend is going to see it and they yeah. could report it to YouTube. So it's like we're always having to blur people's fast, faces, too. and so it, it's really it's fast. way higher now with not wanting to get arrested and getting recognized. It makes it way more difficult, but we still try our best to to do it. Um, how many times have you been arrested for pr doing a prank? I've been arrested. I've arrested twice. Once, once in Toronto and then once in Texas. Like, obviously we don't want to condone getting arrested, but no. if it's a prank and then you've got arrested in your head, you're like, yes. It done. sucks, bro. I'm, I'm, not, I'm, not, I'm, not, I'm, not, I'm not bred for jail, I'll tell you that. Oh, really? Bro, I'm not bred for jail. And do they know you when they, like, when you get arrested? You're like, yo, yo, this is Carl Milk Boys. Like, you know, like, do they know? I don't, I don't rep it. I don't rep it in jail, but both times I've been in there, I've been recognized. <laughs> no way! Yeah. Wasn't it in the showers, was it? Yeah. Not in the showers. <laughs> Is it Not a, in the showers. Well, was it a good thing to be recognized in jail? It actually was, yeah, because first they, everyone's in there for like serious shit. You yeah. know what I'm saying? Like stealing cars or like whatever, <laughs> like fighting with their wife or whatever. But uh, yeah. yeah, when they tell, when we tell them what we're in there for, like we're pranksters, we did this. It's kind of like a bit of, it's like a funny moment for them, sure. I think. And then, yeah, one time I was in there and like someone was just banging on the glass, like full send, full send. <laughs> I swear to God. And I was just like. Then everyone's like, what do you do? And I, I tell them the story of why I'm in there and they laugh. Whoa. So it's kind of, oh, but we've only been in there for like, like a day or like 12 hours, different times. But you, you're, but that's enough. You're that's telling enough. people yeah. it's not good to be inside a, in, in any type of jail. Or bro, you don't want to go to jail, bro. You don't want to <laughs> go to jail. I've <laughs> fully, fully been in jail, but I've been arrested once and that was Alabama, right? The target prank. But yeah. that was, that was only for like a couple hours. We were just in there, but it's just exactly like the movies. Like, there's the lunchroom, and it's just oh like, gosh. dude, yeah, oh. it's not good. We saw it last two minutes. Yeah, no, no <laughs> thanks. So from, be, from being arrested to creating everything that you guys have done, 
let's talk about some big names. Elon Musk. Yeah, Elon Musk we've had on the podcast. So how do you, obviously you know that you're doing something right if the likes of the world's richest man and everything else that he's created and what he's doing wants to come onto your podcast. It's crazy. It's crazy. I know when we started the podcast, what's happened with that is because we didn't start doing interviews or anything like that. But yeah, we just have, you know, we could speak to the youth. I think we own that 18 to 35 even. I'd say, I think so. Yeah. Or older even too. People always think we have like 12 year old fans. No, not at all. But yeah, we could speak directly to the youth and it's pretty cool. Like to be able to have the opportunity to sit down with like Elon Musk or Donald Trump. Mike it Tyson, is pretty crazy. Shaq. It's yeah, crazy man. Yeah, you guys like? I mean, it's. it's I like, mean, it's it is pretty wild. Yeah. Like we've been doing this show for 16 years together, right? I've been in radio for 21, and we, you know, I've interviewed Mike Tyson and a bunch of big names. But it comes with a year, years of, of I guess just grinding to get to those names, right? Yeah. And this is nothing taken away from what you guys have done. Yeah. But in how many years? I mean, what, four or five? How long was the podcast going? The podcast going? is like two years. Okay, so you're two if years that, two years that. in, yeah. and you've got Donald Trump, Elon Musk, Mike Tyson, yeah. right? I think that's what that's why it does so well, too, is because we're not, like, I'm never claiming to be like Joe Rogan of podcasting, you know what I'm saying? Sure, like, we're yeah. learning as we go. We're getting better every podcast. And, yeah, we just kind of ask whatever we want to know and stuff like that. I was so, going to say, when Elon Musk comes in, what are you, is there a prep? Are you guys briefing before the show? Like, all right, guys, what do we got? Elon Musk is coming in and you guys are setting up like a bit of a game plan? Yeah, we're setting up a game plan it's for good. sure. And yeah, we're definitely trying to prep more and stuff. Um, but yeah, for guests like that, we definitely prep like... So when Elon first walked into the room, had you spoken to him before? Like, like the, I want to know what it was to meet Pretty Elon crazy. Musk straight up first time. Um, yeah, no, basically what had happened was... Uh, what, yeah, I guess we never told this story. No, pretty much when, when we got there, some stuff went down to where they were a little worried about coming on the show because of uh, a prank that we had done in the past involving Tesla. Right. Ah. Yeah, so his security team kind of got a bit of an alert and they're like, hey, what's up with this video? And then we're like, don't worry, blah, blah, blah. So we we're supposed to shoot the interview that day and it actually went down 48 hours later because they, they almost got cold feet. So we just had to, we flew to Austin, Texas, and we were waiting around there for two days. It was supposed to go down, and then just no response, no response, no response. John Shahidi, John. the president of uh, our company, he was messaging Elon, and then eventually it, it went down. And he stayed for four hours. I remember Whoa. sitting in the, in, the, in the hotel, and we're just like, bro, is, he gonna, is it going to happen? But we weren't leaving. Like, we're like, we're no, leaving. there's no way we f we're flying here. Like, we are making this happen. Like, he, he agreed to it. We know he's gonna do it and we just kept convincing them like we assured them like yo nothing's gonna happen and it was a great interview he said that he had a great time he tweeted it out he's like i had a great time stayed for four hours it was a long pod he probably crushed like six happy dads that's awesome that's got, got a bit <laughs> did he go to the bathroom between it I don't think so, bro. Yeah, I don't think he. Did. I don't think he even goes to the bathroom. He's like a robot. Right? <laughs> <laughs> so when when he first when you first got to meet Elon then and you both uh, like he's fairly tall, isn't he? Yeah, he's a big guy. He's a big okay. guy. So like, are you? I mean, it's it's the world's richest man, but he's also all of his other achievements. How do you feel? It's just surreal. You know what I'm saying? It's just yeah, it's, surreal. it's hard surreal to like. Is a word. Yeah, it's just it's, it's really just feels surreal. Like you're not kind of like taking it in in the moment. Like even when you say it now, it's just like damn. I, we did have Elon. Like, it's hard to really grasp it. Well, what a great, you know, and some parents may look at you guys and be like, oh my gosh, don't follow these guys. But what a great inspiration that you are for the youth. Like, you're just some kids who created a YouTube page, flash forward some years later, and you're interviewing, you know, the president of America, the world's richest man, pound for pound, one of the greatest fighters in the world. You know, yeah, <laughs> like, it's pretty crazy that there is, a, there is an ability for somebody who if you don't want to go down the route of going to college and just doing the usual thing, which I'm not against saying you shouldn't go to college, education is important, but look at the opportunities and what you guys are doing right now, flying around the world, making people laugh, making people happy, being influential at the same time, pretty important, huh? pretty cool. It is the best job. We're very, very grateful, very grateful every day, honestly. Our whole team's grateful. I very mean, true. we were just talking about that yesterday too, right? Like, how can you complain about this? Mm. And yeah, we just try to make funny content and you know, as long as you get the views and people are watching, the money always comes. Mm -hmm. It always comes. So you don't got to worry about like making a living right away. As long as you have that viewership, you're going to figure out ways to make a living. 100%.
Is there anyone on your wish list that you want on your podcast but haven't been able to get to yet? Kim, Kim Jong Un. <gasps> Would you fly there? Yeah. I mean, it'd have to be done right. I think that Dennis Rodman. Have you spoken Dennis to Rodman? Him? Yeah, I, I know the guy that took Rodman there. I met him when we did Hulk Hogan, and but right now there's a travel ban. So I think I think if I think if I think if Trump wins and he's in office, you I would might. I'd feel more comfortable going because I think that he if anything happened he'd be able to get us out. <laughs> some some the right person could broker that deal and say hey they want to do an interview with you. Wow, I mean, and you said you know Donald Trump. Do you have him on the like? Do you have a, his phone number or do you have someone's phone number? How does that work? Like, I don't I don't have his phone number, phone but phone. um. Yeah, we, we talked to his team. We have a few people on his team. Dana White is the one, again, that set that up for us, the Trump interview. But, yeah, we've been on Air Force One. You were on Air Force One? Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah I'm Canadian, too, so I, know, I might be, you, like, one of the only... On exactly, <laughs> I don't know, right? Yeah. We, we flew from where? To Arizona? Was... Yeah. We flew from Vegas to Vegas. somewhere in Arizona. Well, they sent you the plane? No, we we, we got on, on with plane. Dana. Well, yeah. yeah, I was just saying, like, they sent you to get on the plane and fly with... Yeah, yeah, like they were flying already and they said, come on with us. We were, that was the first time we were supposed to interview him. Was and he was on the plane? The, he's on the plane, mm -hmm. yeah. What's it, what's it look like? Like inside, yeah, inside? like every names. Um, there's like this room, everyone's name. Mean? They're like, yo, um, it says my last name, your last name. They know who's going to be on. Wait, well, like as in on a piece of paper, it's yeah, printed. Sit down, we're all in suits. There's just like a bunch of like news reporters on news there and reporters, stuff. And it's yeah. just like, yeah, it's crazy. We were supposed to interview him that day. It was before the last election. Yeah. 20, what was it, 20, yeah, 2020. Yeah, 2020. Yeah, yeah, yeah. right before that. So. Did you go to the bathroom in there? I didn't on there. No, what? Man, I want to know what it was. Shit. The one place. I know. We went into, like, his office in there. <laughs> what did he say in the... Yeah, he just, like, CNN. you know Trump, he's always, like, he compliments you just on anything, right? Like, just calling us, like, good-looking guys and, like, <laughs> just, like, he really knows how to fire you up and feed your ego, right? He's, so cool. he's a master of that. You remember he was looking at, at the at CNN and he was like, look how good I look. Look at me. Like, yeah. It was one of his, uh... <laughs> he's, he's exactly, he's exactly know, like he is on that. TV. He's exactly like that in real life. Yeah. Exact, exact I mean, same. That is... Again, are you, you're sitting on Air Force One. Are you guys like pinching yourself? You're like, what are we doing? Trump's probably our, our my favorite one that I've done. Like even just politics aside, like just because he's such an animated person too. You know, Elon is a little more like kind of reserved Subdued. and interesting, but yeah. Trump is just like when when that guy walks into a room, like he lights up the room. Mm -hmm. Like everyone in the room's like, you know, because he's very obviously he's very charismatic and he's very like a personality. Yeah. So having him on. Is, is probably my favorite one. I love it. The boys are here. Uh, they're in the country right now. The Nelk boys, you can get them on YouTube, Nelk Films as well. What do we got? 8 million on YouTube, 4 million on Instagram, 4.6 on TikTok. Do you guys look at your numbers? Do you want to? Yeah, yeah, all the time. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, all the time. <laughs> we do. Yeah, followers, I don't think we care about as much. Views. More just views, yeah. views per video, like individual videos. Followers, we don't really care. Like, we want to continue to elevate, that. so we care about it a lot. So when you say you want those views, is it for self-satisfaction? Is it a mental game, or is it the monetary value that you're looking, or is it both combined? I think it's, we don't make money off views. We mm -hmm. don't really make money off YouTube at all, off views, because, I mean, we use, like, copyright music, too, and, like, sure. we just don't care about YouTube views, like or YouTube uh, money off views. Okay. We've never made money off YouTube views. So, because um, we were, like, more R-rated. But no, it's more just a mental game, and it's yeah, it's fun. Like like I said, to think of an idea, go out and shoot it, edit it, post it, and then see ten million yeah, views. Yeah, that's the it's best like, feeling. It's fun. All right, let's talk Happy Dad right now. This beverage company that you guys have released um, has been crazy. It's funny. I messaged, I WhatsApp John about a month ago, and I said, Yo. Let me bring it out to the Middle East. Let me be the distributor. We should, yeah. Yeah. We should. He said... Because there's no seltzers here, right? Nothing like what oh, you guys yeah. are doing. I yeah. mean, nothing of what the caliber of what you guys yeah. have created. I want to ask you guys, obviously, you all have your own personal ventures going on. And like any good thing, like you look at the Beatles, for example, right? You look at these big bands. Eventually, they break up. Mm -hmm. For the Nelk Boys... Has there ever been a moment where it's got that close, where things were just too much? I mean, kind of like, we used to have Jesse, who who kind of, like, started it with me, too, and he'd left for, like, certain reasons that, yeah, just, like, he went fully sober, so it wasn't the best thing for him to kind of be around. I think he'd been doing it for eight years. So people are always kind of in and out, but I think that we're all doing our own things, too, which 
I think is actually really good that everyone's doing their own thing too. It like helps everything. But I think we're always going to be doing stuff together. I think we could do like, Nelk's kind of like a show, right? Correct. So it's like everyone goes and does their own thing and then Avengers. we get together and do, now we upload Nelk like once a month. So it's not like it's every week. So yeah, we say it's like the Avengers getting back together every time it's for Nelk. You know, and then like awesome. he's Spider Man, I'm whatever. Like <laughs> all the superheroes get together for Nelk, and then we just go on a trip like this, have fun, and shoot a video. Some great so, content and just... I think even when we're 40, like, you know, we'll all be taking, like, maybe it's like, all right, we're leaving the kids at home with the wives. It's a boys', <laughs> it's a boys, boys weekend. It could never really end, you know? Yeah. Cool. Well, it's funny because I, I see a simulation of what Jackass was back in the day to where they are now. And they still sometimes get yeah. back together. And, you know, people around my age are like, oh, my like, gosh, yeah. they're back together. Yeah. You know what I mean? To do these special movies or whatever it is. So what about anything on, I mean, anything on the platforms coming out? Would you guys ever do anything on the, uh, like, like on streaming? a net, like streaming Netflix? I'm sure these guys have approached you. Has any, is anything in the works? Yeah. Or like a Netflix type show or something like that. Yeah. Yeah. yeah the thing is with that is I feel like. You only get one shot at that, I call it like elevated content. Sure. And I, I've seen so many times where it's like they try to do it and it just is not the same. Mm. So I'm like very hesitant to do that. We It have to be done right. Like if we were to do a movie or something, sure. there's nothing worse than making like a terrible movie. Like that's right. just, ugh, that's yeah. scary. So if we were to do that, it's and you don't really make a lot of money off that too. So it's all for the exposure in my opinion. Mm -hmm. Like I would do yeah. it more just because being on a Netflix show is huge, right? Like yeah. so... We've talked about it, and I'm, I'm sure we'll do it, but we just got to make sure it's done right and it's fire. All right. Um, thank you for your time. We're not, we're gonna, you're going to go soon, but I just want to try a few more things with you. Uh, Carl and Salim are here with us right now, Virgin Radio, the Chris Fade Show. You guys all right? You feel comfortable? Yeah, yeah, everything good. cool? Yeah, 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 yeah. everything cool. So what we want to try here is I want to get to know, see how well you guys know each other. How well do you guys know each other? I probably know. I probably know Salim pretty well. well. Yeah. So what we want to try here is a game that we've come up with, and you can say yes or no to this game. Uh, we have uh, cans of food, yeah. right? Uh -huh. And what we want to play is a game called. Now, do you know the Do you know the term neck? Like you neck it. Neck it there. No. 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 I don't know. Very what? Good. Drink it? Very. Yeah. Don't, no, don't, don't, don't open it yet. Don't open it yet. It's um. It's it's a British and Australian term of you neck it. So you just smash it down, right? All right. So what we want to play here. Uh, you, this is totally up to the boys, right? So it's called Nelk or Neck. We're going to ask you a question about each other. You're both going to have to answer questions about each other. If you get the question right, you don't have to open up this can. These are cans of food. We don't know what's in them. Human oh, food. But, ah. but they're fresh. We I thought it was beer. No, he got excited. He got excited. So if you get the question right, you don't have to take a bite, open it or anything, right? Okay. If you get it wrong, you have to open it up and take a bite of it. Okay. Everything's edible, everything's safe, everything's like that. We haven't gone that extreme. There's no, there's no cat Spoons. food or dog food or anything all right. It's all human intake. We've eaten it, most of us. But it's called uh, Nelk or Neck right here uh, with the Nelk boys. Give them a big round of applause, yes. guys. Here we go. <laughs> all right. So I'm going to ask you first. When is Kyle's birthday? July 12th. Nine. That's good enough. Yeah, <laughs> I'll take July 12th. Yeah. There it is. It's in. Okay. Don't I, I'm so bad with birthdays, bro. Fuck. <laughs> <laughs> All right. I won't ask you the birthday. <laughs> Kyle, what city was Celine born in? San Jose? Yeah. Uh -huh. Right. Oh, they know each other. They're doing job. all right. They know each other. But I see the nervousness in both of your faces right <laughs> no, now. I think, I think we know a lot. We know a lot. Yeah. Salim, so, what is Kyle's sister's name? Sisters, plural. <laughs> yeah, it's one, one sister. sister. Okay. <laughs> Damn, I, I try to get him. Have you met her? I have met her. I have met her once. Oh. Oh. <sighs> Give you a 10 second timer here. Ah, I don't know. I'm sorry. Chantel. Oh. Chantel. Chantel. Oh. Oh. Which means now yeah. you have you have a selection of about five different yeah. cans there from different types of food. Some of them traditional foods that you'd find here in the Middle East, actually. Some really nice food. Um, you've just got to open up one and just take a, a neck of it. Just choose any one. He's, he's gone with... This gold... Whatever it is. Do you want me to open it? I've got nails. Yeah, let me open this Oh, I knew it. Yeah, you did not. I knew it. What is in there? Oh. What is that? Oh, oh bro. 
Ew. Oh, that's disgusting. Don't cut, don't, don't cut yourself. Don't cut yourself. There's a, a spoon, spoon there. there. It's Jesus Christ, bro. That is tahini. I gotta eat it all? No, I, don't it all. I don't think it's tahini. What is it? No, you just have a bite, bro. Don't eat the whole oh, that's thing. Gross. You gotta have a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> He's looking at the team like, guys, are we doing this? Uh, where are you? Don't have to. <laughs> yeah, I'm just like, no, 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 no. What is it? Funny thing is, it's gonna what? hit on my sister when he makes it. Oh, 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 I'm joking. I'm joking. I'm joking. I'm joking. I'm joking. That's enough. Oh no, no, no. I'll, I'll go with you. I'll go with you. What is it? What is it? Plum dip. Oh, it's just it's bubble gum. No, oh, you'll this like is, it. You'll, you'll like love it. this. This is beautiful. I'll have a bite of that. <laughs> People pay yeah, good money for that. That's bubble gum noosh. That's eggplant with garlic and olive oil. What do you think? Yeah. <laughs> just, oh man, I'll bathe in this. Yeah. Mm. You're out of your mind. Yeah, that's good stuff right there. Yeah. Mm. All right. All right, well, we'll leave it on one more. Carl, this is your, your final chance here. Good luck. You may walk You around. got a good one for me now, I know. Yeah, I'm gonna try to find a good one for you, exactly. All right, here we go. <clears throat> oh, which one should I go for? Who is Salim's celebrity crush. And if you could just write down your answer for me here without kind Kyle, of don't look. It. Don't cheat. Now, this is one that's been on the internet, right? So oh, I'm just trying to think. No, it's whatever. Do, do, any answer. Here you go. Okay. Are we? You know what? Here we go. Right, just write it down. Do you have one? Kyle, don't, don't look. Really have uh, one. He doesn't like. I don't have one. Oh, you don't have a celebrity crush? No. Like, not that he talks about, really. Nah, nah. He, would, he wouldn't. Like, I You're not a know. vocal celebrity crush guy. No, no, I wouldn't even know. To be honest. All right, I'll keep it simple then. What is Salim's zodiac sign? <laughs> oh, another question. We don't I don't even know, know my own zodiac <laughs> sign, man. I don't know zodiac signs. Uh, I don't know. I don't one, even. I, one more, one, one better. Like one question. Well, if he gets it wrong, he's got to eat something. So. Well, I've got four. You can choose whichever one you want, but he might choose the one that you're gonna get right. Nah, that's true. Do you know what I mean? Like, I don't, I don't want that to happen. Do you know? You don't know the zodiac signs. So you don't know his birthday. I don't even know my zodiac sign. What's your zodiac sign? Yeah, uh, I don't know the months of like zodiac. Yeah, I don't know the months either. Okay. <laughs> Making it very hard for us. I've got another one, but I, I think it could be too easy. Uh, don't don't look at Carl right now. Right now, what is the color of his eyes? Brown. Yeah. See. No. <laughs> and the last one is the last one that I've got here is name me his favorite TV show. Do you have a favorite TV show? You don't have a celebrity crush. Do you have a favorite TV show? I don't watch TV, man. Like, <laughs> growing up, like, what, what, what is a oh, show that, what, yeah, that you yeah, would watch? Oh, don't say it yet. Don't say it. <laughs> I don't know. It's probably Neck. <laughs> uh, nah, it's probably just... UFC Embedded is your favorite show now. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Um, nah. Uh, is he... Well, that's it. That's his oh, answer. Do you have uh, another uh, answer? No, uh, yeah, I uh, do. It's everybody hates Chris. I used to always watch Oh, everybody uh, hates Chris, yeah. Uh, all right, come on, Carl. Right. Just, 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 <laughs> we just wanted you to open up a can. That's all it was, mate. That's all it was. Here it is. What's he got? Oh, he's gone you've gone. Do you want to open that? He's gone for the uh, the chicken hot dogs, I think. Oh, oh. Just watch it. Don't, Don't cut, cut yourself. yourself. Imported from can I open Holland? Okay. Oh, in brine. In brine. Oh, yeah, don't, don't no one cut themselves. That whoop is going to be working extra hard in a moment here when he's just just have a bite, just a bite. The hell is that? A hot dog? <laughs> it's from Germany. It's a hot. Is that dog. a hot? Just take a bite. Yeah, yeah, it's, it's a, a chicken. Free, it's a Frankfurt. <laughs> <laughs> That's probably not bad. Fire. Yeah, see, it's good. <laughs> These are delicacies. Yeah, I lost this game. <laughs> you got the bubble gum noodles. That is a good thing. That did not taste good. <laughs> Um, guys, you, you're truly both uh, as fantastic as you are on the screens when we get to watch you and you come up on our Instagram or YouTube or any of those things. Um, super proud of what you boys are doing. Keep doing what you're doing. Thank you. Um, and again, we only want more success for all of you guys. Give them a big round of applause. Yeah. Carl and Selena, <laughs> well done. Watching.